The Home Secretary is to summon the head of the London Metropolitan Police, uh, Sir Mark Rowley, today, uh, after people chanted jihad on the streets of London at the weekend. Well, Suella, Brav Suella sorry, Braverman will tell Sir Mark Rowley that there can be no place for hatred and violence on Britain's streets. Joining us now, former Conservative Special Advisor Charlie Rowley. Charlie, good morning. Uh, welcome morning. to the show. Thanks morning. for coming in. Uh, Jenrick saying, and I quote, that um, chanting jihad uh, in London is inciting violence. An interesting chat there on the paper review made the point that jihad means holy war, does not mean free Palestine. Nick quite rightly saying, listen, these, these things are being hijacked. Free speech, absolutely. People can say free Palestine, but jihad is inciting violence. You talk about ISIS, you talk about al-Qaeda. Shocking to think, Charlie Rowley, there ain't a law. There's a law in this country for, you know, all sorts of... But you can incite violence and get away with it. Well, I think that's why it's absolutely right that the Home Secretary and Rob Jenrick are meeting uh, the Metropolitan Police uh, Commissioner, Sir Mark Brody, to have this conversation as to why more action wasn't taken. This was, as we heard during that paper debate, you know, there was a separate group of people away from the main protest. Yeah. And I think we've got to put into context, look, people have been allowed to protest in London. It's been banned in France. I think it's been banned in Spain. We have this... Uh, brilliant democracy, this idea of free speech in this country. It's absolutely right. But when you overstep the mark, when you incite hate and terror, mm. as could only be the context of what was taking place, I think, on the streets of London on Saturday, because of the context, nobody was shouting it. You don't need to be Inspector Clouseau to work out that actually, given what was happening in Israel and Palestine, mm. that it was meant anything other. Uh, I think there are serious questions to answer, and that's why the Home Secretary is absolutely right to meet the Police and Crime Commissioner today. The Metropolitan Police, though, saying last night the word jihad has a number of meanings, but they know, they acknowledge that most members of the public will uh, associate it with terrorism. But they've had the, the counter-terrorism officers who work within the Met assess the footage and they said that they didn't feel like it was something that was inciting violence that they couldn't take. Or is they that didn't... because there isn't a law, do you think, Nick, or is no. it their own judgment? No, I think if, if you do, yeah, if you do incite violence, there was absolutely a law against that and the majority of it was peaceful anyway. This, like you say, it's, it's separate to the pro-Palestine march anyway, although, you know, inextricably... Well, people will say that it's inextricably linked, although the majority of people there would perhaps not have supported it. But ultimately, if we've got counter-terrorism experts saying, OK, yes, this word we associate with very horrendous connotations, but in this context, it wasn't used in that way, should we be trusting the counter-terrorism police on that? Well, look, um, I'm... Uh... A big support of the police. Look, the men and women on the ground that are actually sort of policing the protests have a really, really difficult job to do. But so there are hard. huge problems within the Met, no mm. doubt about it. Just a bit. And this is another one. Uh, I'm sad to say that is, you know, uh, is going to be top of the entry for the for the Home Secretary. But I, I think you know, there are laws in this country that prevent, you know, uh, incitement of hate and terror. Um, and the fact that actually the Metropolitan Police and the Counter-Terrorism Service and those that were getting real live data on the ground to say, no, actually, this is mm. used in a different context, I think is shocking. And it, so I think, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, well, we have to work out why they thought it was it, in a it, different context. It, my, my question to you both is very simple, right? And, and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say this from now till the end of time. People should be able to demonstrate. But, you know, jihad can mean holy war. And there is absolutely no doubt that for all the genuine Palestinian free Palestine people marching, as much as the Israelis as well, I get that, I absolutely understand it. Mm. And you talked yesterday of being at that Jewish wedding and the fear. The fact is, is that people shouting pro-Hamas and jihad are not peacefully protesting. What I would love to ask, are the police hamstrung because there isn't the right legislation on the book? Or is there a soft underbelly in the Metropolitan Police with the greatest respect? And why do we talk about London the whole time? Can we talk about the rest of the United Kingdom where this is happening? Is there a soft underbelly in the Metropolitan Police that want to turn a blind eye? That, I think, is what people need to do. And so Willa Bravman needs to say to Rowley, yes, my government needs to put into place anybody inciting violence from whichever side of the political spectrum needs to be cleaned off the streets. But at the same time, you need to make sure that your officers abide by the rules. But if they don't know what the... I don't know. That's where I'm at. But the counter-terror counter experts here in this case have said it wasn't inciting violence. However, and I'm going to trust them on that, however, however... You trust the men? Well, there will be... Yeah, even as a woman. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, there will be lone wolf actors yep. in the UK mm. who, even if this was a completely peaceful protest, will see this and interpret it 
as a call to action. There's no denying that. So I, I look, I, I think you know that's absolutely right. But you have to go back to when we had things like you know the um, uh, uh, the. Monarchs ceremony, the uh, the accession of uh, of King Charles. You course, know, people yeah. that were protesting, and Coronation. rightly so, I think were hauled off the streets pretty quickly because you don't want to uh, have any kind of uh, well scene, you know, that, that would incite violence or yeah. lead to something else unthinkable happening. I think the police should have taken exactly the same approach. Pretty it's a sort right. of you know, you need to act now and maybe ask questions a bit later on, yeah. not the other way around. When it comes to something, and I think there, no, I, and I think you're absolutely right, Jeremy. To your point, I think there is a an, an undercurrent within the Met that are too scared. It's too politically correct because they don't want to do the wrong thing and by not doing the wrong the world, thing you end up not doing is, the right the thing. The world yeah, but is I, full of people nowadays who are... Do you know my great phrase the other day? People are too scared to lose their jobs so they don't do their damn jobs. I'm convinced but about But wouldn't that. you say that the police were so heavy-handed at the coronation to use your example that they ended up arresting royalists? Well, it doesn't matter yeah. whether they were heavy-handed at the vest. None of my business. But, the fact is they could have been heavy-handed over the weekend. Exactly. Which and shows their choice. What they're saying is, yeah, with, by their actions they're saying we, we care more about protecting Protecting mm. the royal family than we do about pe Jewish people. Can I ju can I jump straight in very quickly because we haven't got much time and I know that Nick talked about it just now. Mark Harper, Transport Secretary, here at seven thirty this morning. Mm. Loads to ask him. Get your get your comments in. What do you want to ask the Transport Secretary? This announcement, Charlie, one hundred and fifty million quid, Nick, I think, for M Birmingham and the North for bus routes. This is on the back of HS two suddenly being too expensive and not happening. What's your thoughts? Yes, yeah, so I think it was the uh, conference announcement, the big conference announcement by the Prime Minister in, uh, in Manchester that HS2 being cancelled. This is the first tranche of up to, well, it's a billion pound pot, but 150 million going to the north of the Midlands to uh, keep our buses going, keeping two pound bus fares because buses are, um, according to the DFT today, um, uh, the biggest use of public transport and it's going to help to protect the nighttime economy as well as more services during the day and obviously particularly older people that use buses more than anybody else. Could I cynically ask a question? If that's the case, why did they go on about HS2 for years and suddenly only work out the buses are quite a lifeblood for people in the north? Well, I think that's an excellent question. There's also another question about HS2, I think, in the papers, where there's been uh, uh, an alleged cover-up for years of people that were running the project, mm. people in the civil service that might have known about the cost spiralling, that weren't open about that to ministers, yeah. where we've seen costs balloon only at the expense of the taxpayer, where this project could have either been canned long ago because it was going to be too expensive, or there could have been alternatives to make sure that that project goes ahead, which would have absolutely benefited the North. Um, uh, and I would have even had HS3 if we'd had the money, if we'd had more open conversations within the civil service and run, the people running that project but it's all it's all uh, and suddenly it, they care about buses in. right to you suddenly they've worked out that it's a lot of money and it's not going to work charlie Rowley, you can come back anytime <laughs> smart <laughs> chips thank you